the clap. Info night. Info night, serial storytellers, 2021. Here we go. Okay, serial storytellers, info night, 2.0. Hi, everyone. I'm Dawn Valadez. I'm the um, director of youth and emerging media maker programs at the Bay Area Video Coalition. And we're excited to have you here. This is our um, second time that we're offering the Serial Storyteller program. We're really excited about that. And BayVac, um, as many of you know, is a 45 year old storytelling organization. And our focus really has been through that time to develop and support diverse voices in storytelling. And we do that through a number of different ways. One, one is that we do youth programs, which is what we'll be talking about tonight. We also have adult education programs, which are really cool. Um, you know, a lot of different kinds of classes on um, media making. We have a really state of the art preservation department, which helps um, people who have uh, video tapes, video, all kinds of different video media um, to preserve that and protect it. And we also run the um, San Francisco Commons, which is the cable access network. Um, so we do lots of production. We do lots of conversations, um, events, and um, training programs. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about our youth programs. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jay Gash. Uh, I manage the youth programs at Bay Area Video Coalition. Um, I'm just gonna briefly go over some of our offerings outside of um, the Serial Storytellers program. Uh, the Bridges Fellowship is a free program designed to help the diverse co cohort of transitional age youth that are 18 to 24 years old, learn strategies to successfully prepare for a challenge and ultimately surmount the barriers to entering the employment industry um, in media and technology. Uh, so we have a couple of fellows who are actually uh, in the room with us um, and they can definitely be a testament to how important um, programs like this are for that particular age group. Um, so they don't know the ins and outs of video production um, and come away with it with a producer editor certificate as well as a stipend. Uh, next slide. In our other program, uh, Next Gen, uh, it was created to give high schoolers age 14 to 17 the opportunity to learn to tell their own stories and really engage in social justice topics uh, and discussions. So students have the opportunity to take either a video production course, an audio production course, a game code design course, or an animation class that will um, really help them build their technical know-how around those particular classes, in addition to really emphasizing um, socio-emotional awareness and just like being a holistic person in the world. Um, both programs are free and uh, I will let Ali take it away to talk a little bit about real stories. All right, so as I quickly introduce myself there at the beginning, um, I'm Alexandria, you can call me Ali, and I'm the program manager on the real story side of re um, youth programming. So we have a slightly narrower niche here. So we primarily serve our female and non-binary students. Although uh, in the last year and a half, almost two years, we've started to open up some weekend intensives and master classes to anybody of any background and any skill level. But Real Stories is a nonprofit that was really born from a founder's dream who worked in Pixar and always found herself to be the only female in a lot of the big decision-making rooms and on most of her teams. So her passion really derived from wanting to give more space to female and non-binary creators in the filmmaking industry. So we here serve um, mostly our middle and high school youth, although again, we have been opening it up to more of our emerging adult age students as well, some college age students and programs and such. And we really are the entry point for our filmmakers. So a lot of the classes and programs we focus on are for our newcomers to filmmaking that want to get that exposure before going into some more intensive programs. So we have all that information about um, our programs, such as our sliding scale and scholarship on our website, and we'll drop that link in later as well. Great. Thank you, Jay and Allie. So the Serial Storytellers um, project started in the 
really the idea of it started in the fall of 2019. Our, um, the executive director of um, BAVAC, um, Paula Aragoni, and I had a conversation about the need to develop showrunners and people who are making episodic programming. And um, Paula had visited with or had seen a class that Yvette Vargas had taught um, in her 5050 um, Writers Room program. Uh, and she was like, we have to do this at BAVAC. This is something that's really, really important. So we started it off with one um, course that was um, about 10 weeks long. And it was really about getting um, diverse um, writers, really focusing on Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, queer people, women, non-binary folks, um, to come into the um, environment to learn what it takes to actually write a series, to, to develop it from the beginning, really thinking about your overall concept to um, creating your pilot episode. So that's um, why we started this. And we've received a grant from, the, from at and which was really exciting, which helped fund that first, um, that first semester. And we're gonna hear from some of the people who completed that program uh, uh, then. And this time around, we're actually looking, we're expanding um, what, what we're talking about when we think about what serial storytellers are. So let me tell you a little bit about the program overview. Uh, we Really this program is focused on people who are transitional age youth, um, 18 to 25 year olds. And I've definitely been getting a lot of people calling in and saying, what about people who are over 25? And, you know, at some point, we'll probably want to offer a program for people who are over 25. But this program is very special because it really is for those emerging media makers, for people who are right at that point where they're looking at writing and creating media that can be seen on the what we now consider television on all of these streaming platforms. Um, we need people who are super interested in creating episodic programs. So this is not for people doing a feature length documentary or a feature length film or a short film. This is about for people who are interested in doing a series. And again, our focus is on black indigenous and other people of color for queer LGBTQI. Gender expansive, non binary folks, women, low income people. Really, when we think about it, this is for people who, in many cases, have been left out of mainstream, of the mainstream media and of mainstream episodic programming. And we are really strongly committed to this because we know that, that there are stories and um, series that need to be made that we are not seeing. And I, you know, just from my own personal experience, I happen to watch a lot of um, programming on these streaming platforms and they do not represent the communities of people that I know are around us and who have stories to tell. So that is why we are doing this and why we really are committed to doing it. Uh, so the program this year is going to run May 1st through July 10th. Um, we'll take off probably July 3rd. Um, it will be running on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we're going to have two tracks, and we'll talk about that in a second again, but we're going to have a scripted track and an, and an unscripted or docu-series track. At the end of the program, we're going to have at least one um, a series, probably like three sessions on production. So once you've written your, your series or once you've created your um, docu-series, what does it take for you to actually develop a production um, plan? And so we'll have a we'll have a, a series, a couple of sessions that will be focusing on that. I'm also hoping to provide a pitch session as well. So we're thinking about doing one or two pitch sessions. So those will be announced during the program. So let's talk first about what the scripted piece is. And, you know, there's a lot of ways people talk about this. It's scripted, it's a fi fictionalized um, uh, series. And last year, and we'll hear in a moment from some of the people who were in the program, this is the program that we, we offered last year. Um, and you can go to the next slide, that's fine. 
um, this is an example of what people came out of that um, program with. Uh, on the left hand side is um, really the description of the series. It has the log line, it has a summary of the series, it has the characters in the series. And then on the right hand side, so the person's picture there is one of the is the person who wrote this on the on the right hand side is the pilot episode and it includes um it's and just to be really frank and honest with all of you this um scripted program it's the expectation is that you're writing a lot of pages every single week week that you will then be presenting to your fellow participants and the goal is to create both this um, overview of your series as well as your pilot episode and possibly description of your first maybe two or three different episodes um, that you're working on. And you're gonna learn how to do this based on industry standards. So you're gonna be share writing every single week, sharing those pages, getting feedback from your fellow participants and learning what the format is. For our unscripted docu-series, um, we are looking for um, an instructor for this. So we don't have our instructor yes, yet, but I'm, gonna, I'm sharing a piece with you right now because I'm working personally working on an unscripted docu-series that is a six part series. Um, and this is a cup, this is from my pitch deck so I can share my pitch deck with you. I'm not, you know, being, being fair to not share somebody else's work with you. Uh, my art, our, our docu-series is um, about four sisters who are fighting for justice for their brothers who were murdered by the police. And we've been following their stories um, since their brothers were killed last summer. Um, so we're working on that and we are contracting, I can't tell you yet who the person is, but we have a couple of people in mind who will be teaching this class on what it takes to do a docu-series and we'll have a number of guest speakers who will be coming into the program and sharing with you what it takes to develop a docu-series, to come up with the writing for that and to be able to pitch it to um, streaming platforms who may be interested in um, your unscripted docu-series. Um, so I'll tell you now just a quickly about our instructors. For the, for the scripted series, um, Yvette Vargas is gonna be our instructor again. And she is based in Los Angeles. Um, she's in Hollywood. She just got written up in a number of places and I, um, I'll share those. I'll probably share those on the website for folks, um, but we'll have a, a moment for people to talk about um, her Oh, thank you, um, Jay. Jay put it in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, she created um, a program called the Writer's Room 5050, which is a mentoring program for um, storytellers. And she runs this program as though you are in the writer's room working on your series. So her expectation is that you're gonna be writing pages and that you're gonna be sharing those pages. She'll teach you the structure of um, how to write uh, a series script and um, provide the opportunity for you to, to really learn what that structure is and how, how to do it. It's, she, she just had um, two of her programs um, were just sold. So she's pretty excited. She'll be telling you a little bit about that in the class as well. Um, and the class, I see there's questions in the chat. The classes are three hours long on Saturdays. So 11 to two. Uh, our instructor who's gonna be teaching the production class at the end is um, Chris Martin. He's a producer, he's been a line producer and a writer. He's many years experience um, working in film and television. And he will show share with all of you what it takes to go from you know, your concept and your idea to actually um, developing your budget creating and creating your um, production plan. And then there's me. Um, I'm a documentary filmmaker. 
I'm working with BAVAC and I will be the person who will be um, working with both of these groups, um, supporting all of you, supporting um, the instructors so that you, the both the instructors are able to share with you as much as they possibly can and that you can get the support that you need in order to be successful in the class. So, uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, I was just gonna say just quickly, similar to what we're using now, it's gonna be via Zoom and so, the requirements are obviously because we're not shooting uh, these projects at the moment, it is going to be much more just laptop focused. And I know both Bayback and Real Stories are able to accommodate anybody that might need uh, a laptop or any additional tech support throughout the program. Yeah, and because this is a virtual program, it means that we can have people from anywhere. Um, it, it's not limited to the Bay Area. It's not limited to California. It's not limited even to the United States. So we're definitely, for those of you watching and for those of you who may have friends who are interested in this, feel free um, to share this with people um, anywhere um, who would be interested in participating um, in this program because we're excited to be able to share these tools with folks um, uh, everywhere that um, they're interested in. So I know Jay is going to go over the application. Jay, did you want to share your screen or did you want me to show the application preview here? If I just uh, sent you the link, if you could pull that up on yours, that would be great. And then I can go over it. I think the, the next slide is also linked too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh, can everybody still see this? Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay, so a little bit um, of, on the application, um, we're just going to go through, you know, some of the questions and obviously if there are some uh, questions that come up for those who are in the audience, please like let us know. Um, so we want to know a little bit about you. So first name, last name, contact info. Um, we ask for your date of birth because we do make sure, want to make sure the program is for 18 to 25 year olds. If for any, you know, if in, if there's a case where, you know, you're 17 and you're turning 18, we would still encourage you to apply. Uh, same goes where like if you're 25 while you're in the cohort or in the program and you're turning 26, we would still encourage you to apply. So we don't want to, um, sort of exclude anyone based off of age in particular. So we're a little bit flexible around that. Um, we ask a little bit about your background. Uh, so your pronouns, race, ethnicity, race and ethnicity. Um, we ask in preparation for um, some website changes and because we want to highlight those who are involved for a headshot, um, where you've gone to school, uh, if you, we want to also know if you've previously attended any Bayback or Real Stories programming. Um, I think one thing that might be missing, and we may ask for that later, is uh, oh, it's coming up. So, um, yeah. So we want to know a little bit about your background. Uh, so, like, please, like, let us know who you are, your experiences, and what brought you to um, be interested in our program. Um, we ask that you select which track you're interested in. You should only be choosing one fiction slash scripted or nonfiction unscripted. Um, and again, you can tell us about yourself in 200 words or less um, with a brief bio. Uh, we ask that you share a synopsis, so a brief uh, a concept of your episodic series or project in one to two paragraphs. So kind of keeping that brief. Um, again, this is sort of your introduction to how much writing there will be uh, within the program, but it is really to get your gears turning. Um, and even if you have an idea, like something that you're not starting completely from scratch, we encourage you to share that as well. Um, next, we asked about previous work. So any uh, a media or performance project that you've worked on, again, in 200 words or less, uh, it could be a scripted podcast, it could be a film, a short story or a play, uh, but please specify like the roles you played. So if it's something where you played sort of a minor role, we would more want you to emphasize things where you kind of played a lead role, if that, um, you know, if you're able to. Um, again, if you can provide a link to the project, that's even better so we can see what you've been working on. Uh, next will be a creative writing sample. So you would need to share a poem, short story, play, scripted podcast, creative essay. Um, again, only a piece that you were a lead on, 
lead writer on. And then we ask you to get creative. So we want you to tell us the story of someone you saw on the street or in a cafe, um, a brief character sketch. Um, and this can be real or imagined, famous or unknown. Uh, you can think futuristically or from the past, um, whatever comes to you around that. Um, an optional question to answer uh, is who an artist, who's an artist that inspires you and why they do? Um, again, this can be any form, genre, time, um, but we do, we ask these questions in order to get to know you a little bit better um, and your writing style. Uh, lastly, we ask for a referral. So we'll need a letter of recommendation from either an instructor, arts program manager, or another person that knows your work uh, pretty well and it has uh, and has some sort of ties to creating media. Um, so we will ask that we, you state, or they state uh, how they know you, how long they've known you, um, do they know your writing or media making experience and like keep that to a half page to a page. Um, we have a, you can press that link to, or the choose file and add that. I believe we accept PDF doc, uh, possibly also Google docs, uh, but yeah, let us know if you have any trouble with that. Um, going over the commitment again. So it's 10 sessions, uh, Saturdays, May 1st through July 10th, with the exception of July 3rd, which um, there wouldn't be a session. So just um, as you are viewing this and in our audience, um, think about the dates. Um, we really ask that people who are part of this program can commit fully. Um, because each session is really, it can be really intensive, but it's all a lot of valuable information. Um, the program will complete or uh, culminate with a table read, which is on July 10th. And that's a really great experience where we've brought in actors um, from all, I think this past year, we brought in actors that were based in the Bay Area and LA. Um, but it's really an opportunity to bring your stories to life, like in a Zoom, um, eventually, maybe in some another iteration, it can be in person, but it really gets you into what the feel and the vibe of a writer's room. Uh, we asked just again, if you can commit to the program dates and the format. Um, and if there are conflicts, conflicts, please let us know, like maybe there is some wiggle room with that. Um, and, and the last box, you know, please let us know if there's anything else you want us to be aware of, or to know about you about your experience as a um, a writer and as Don mentioned earlier, we'll have a couple of um, bonus workshops. So the basics of production, which you'll be able to hear from Chris Martin, who is really amazing um, uh, contact and has a wealth of knowledge around uh, production. And then there's also uh, an opportunity to pitch your project. Um, so looking at make under, giving you an understanding of how to create a lookbook um, to share your project for residencies and potential producers. And if you are intending to create a film, that's another great opportunity. Um, I know we're gonna have Q&A at the end, but if there are any specific questions around the application, feel free to um, DM me in the chat. And then at the very end, we ask if you're a robot. So that's always a fun question. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back here. Oh, this is exciting. Now we're going to introduce our panelists. We have many of them here tonight with previous experience in this that are going to be able to run you through the ins and outs of this program um, and just give you some insight on how they managed this crash course as well. So I think we're going to, yeah, let me exit this so we can spotlight some of our panelists and have them introduce themselves. How did we want to flow through this? Any Dawn and Jay, I know you all know the guests a little bit better than I do. Yeah, um, I could quickly uh, state names and then, um, yeah, have you all briefly introduce yourselves and sort of answer the first question around what the program experience was like for you. So I'm happy to introduce our first inaugural cohort of serial storytellers. With us, we have Leia. Uh, if you can give a wave, that would be great so people know who you are. Uh, Malachi, sweet, Nars, Sydney, and I know, Rigo, you're here with us, so I wanted to shout you out too. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, let's, um, I don't know, uh, Ali, if you had like, or all of you want to chime in around what the experience was like 
we didn't have a particular order, but um, we're excited to hear from you all this evening. Yeah, if maybe somebody wanted to start and jump in about, you know, what got you excited to join the program and what it was like for you now that you're looking back on it after a year off of it. I don't mind um, going first. Uh, definitely, I like I love writing, actually. <laughs> maybe just to be friendly, I'll turn this back run off. Uh, I don't want to make anybody feel nauseous or anything, <laughs> but uh, I love uh, writing. Like I love uh, creating art, uh, creating content. Um, I like uh, in all forms, like long story short, like behind the camera, in front of the camera, all, all the stuff. Um, so when the opportunity came along for me to like, oh, you can, you know, write your, uh, you know, screen idea, plot, um, basically learn what showrunners do and all of that, I was, very, very excited. And uh, it was really the program. I mean, it's not like I had super strong expectations. I kind of went in blind, but it was very successful. Like um, I went in with an idea of uh, full disclosure, the idea that I, you know, came in with. I literally at the application is when I came up with the idea. I feel like I can say that now. Uh, like literally, like I was thinking when it came to the application, come up with your idea. I was like, oh, what what's the, like a cool idea that I can come up with? Uh, and from that uh, came like a whole um, half an hour in length uh, script uh, that I really, really liked. And of course, um, with the um, help of Don and Yvette and, you know, the other um, students, you know, helped refine it. But it was super rewarding, super, super rewarding. And I feel excited uh, being able to take it with me, you know, in the future and also learning like about how to do it, you know, about, you know, story construction, um, you know, about, you know, beat sheets, how to like construct a story basically out of, uh, you know, engineer a story who basically learned that. And I don't wanna take up too much time, but I also wanna say the um, budgeting thing that we did with Chris Martin, that was also very helpful. Like I thought that I had written the script in a way that would maybe make it like cheap, <laughs> easy to film, oh boy. No, no, no. Once I decided to really like try to like do what he said and try to like realistically budget every single thing, I was like, man, <laughs> uh, if it was really just me and my phone, then it'd be like uh, simple. But as soon as you start adding stuff, you know, but, you know, perspective that I wouldn't have known at all without being the program. So all that to say, I loved it. Awesome. That was great. Who wants to jump in next? And then we can move on to the next question for everyone else. All right. Awesome. Nice. Uh, for me, it was really uh, kind of a recentering for me. Um, I would have never considered myself as a writer um, before this program. I've written, but I've never considered myself as a writer. <clears throat> and really, a uh, hell of a program to jump into to <laughs> write a full script. So, yeah, no, it was really interesting. I think it really helped me recenter on why I wanted to get into filmmaking in the first place when I was younger. Um, Cause I've been always so focused on documentaries and doing freelance and stuff. But now I consider myself a writer. I've been writing kind of almost nonstop. Um, and now I'm like thinking of producing a short film sometimes this year, hopefully. Um, but yeah, no, it was really recentering and working with a lot of amazing creative people and I don't know, it was a really cool experience and kind of life-changing, so yeah. Awesome, and then I was wondering, Leia, I hope I pronounced your name right, Le Leia, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Leia and Sydney, did you want to jump in and um, also share about your experience and then answer this second question of what inspired your project? Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll go, I guess. Um, do you want us to answer the question and then the second or allow Sydney to answer that and then go with the second? Whatever you're inspired to answer. All right. <laughs> um, similar to Malachi, I, um, I write, so I go to school for writing. I'm a um, sophomore right now. And I stumbled upon the program because a high school counselor that I still am in contact with sent me the link and was like, apply for this. And I like checked the link out and everything in the program. And I was like, there is two days left to apply. I don't write scripts. I write like books. I have no idea what I'm doing. And she was like, you write, it's all the same, it's fine. And being in the program, no, it's not. Writing books is so different than writing scripts. And 
I learned that real quick. Um, I feel like a lot of the time I was with people who like majored in film and knew what they were doing. And I was a freshman who I was like, I like writing, it's cool. And had like nothing else under my belt for that. So same thing as Malachi, I like went in uh, to the application, pulled one of my like 50 book ideas and wrote it down in something that could be episodic. And it worked by the grace of God. Um, and being in the program was so incredibly intense. I was really lucky that it happened in the summer and not during school, because if it was both, I, it wouldn't have worked out. But it was so valuable because I learned more in that time than I was in school about like industry standard, industry practice, communicating with other writers. And I haven't necessarily gotten over my fear of like sharing my work, but it certainly desensitized me a little bit to um, sharing my work in class to the point where like, if I'm in a critique, I like look like I'm the most confident person there, even if I'm not. So it was an, an invaluable experience um, and taught me a lot that I'm still using and using to make my um, second series right now. As far as what inspired me to make my first series, uh, like I said, I kind of went through my um, shelved book ideas and um, looked at something where I was like, what would I watch right now on Netflix? Had they, had I just seen it like one sentence, would I watch it, would I not? Because I really don't like watching TV shows or movies all that much. And for me, as someone that really liked fantasy, historical fiction, all that type of stuff, there's a hugely um, underpopulated like world and material that had women of color, queer people, like just anything surrounding our stories and our culture or any sort of historical fiction that wasn't European. And not that I think I'm hot shit, but I was like, I think I can do a little bit better than what we have going on right now. I think I can give us something that isn't so painfully white or has like kind of really racist undertones with how they deal with stuff. So I, I was, a, I would think, think a little bit too highly of myself and was like, I can do this better. And that's what inspired me to do it. I wanted to fill a void. Um, I think that's incredible. And I love that you just lead with like, you know what? I'm hot shit. I got this. Great. Love it. Inspiring. Um, Sydney, I'm going to bounce it to you now to go ahead and jump in here and share a little bit about your background and your inspirations. Yeah. Dang. How am I going to follow up with that one? Okay. <laughs> um, the program experience for me was definitely new. Um, I was already a production coordinator and most of like my experience came from just pre-production and post. So I actually wasn't a writer. I feel like I was helping people like make their own ideas. And in the back of my mind, I always had like that urge to create and have like, oh damn, like I wish I could like come up with this concept and this idea, but I had nothing like to back me up for like my credibility. And so I had a friend that um, knew I loved just like coming up with concepts. And so she told me about the program. I applied. I was like, I'm probably not going to get in. Like, I'm not a writer. Like, I literally have zero experience in that department. Um, and I got in. And it was actually just an amazing experience, especially just considering the time we were in. Like, it was shelter in place. Like, a lot of us have maybe, like, lost our motivation. So, especially for me, like, I feel like it kind of just sparked back my creativity um, and just let me know, like, hey, like, there's a lot of people in this program that are new to this. And I think that was my favorite part about it, that we were all on, like, different levels and just all kind of learning. Um, what else can I say about it? Hmm. Yeah, it was also just a non, like, nonstop learning environment. I felt like if I wasn't learning anything, if I, if I wasn't already learning anything from Yvette, I was learning everything from like everybody in the cohort and the group. Like each time we were writing something, each time we were giving each other feedback, like it was all just its own like new experience. So yeah, this is an amazing program. Um, and it's just encouraged me to just kind of like freely write and just become more of a confident person in doing that. And what inspired my last project? So um, it reminded me a little bit of what Don just, not Don just said, but she said earlier um, about like the lack of authentic stories there are. Um, it reminded me of, so I'm from South Central LA and that's like where my story was kind of based on. And I felt like that whenever I would watch a show about LA, like there would be either lack of representation or the show didn't depict like truly like about the area. And I really wanted, even though my story wasn't mainly about that place, like I wanted 
if you read my scripts, like you would understand and have a feel for like the authentic authenticity of that place. Like, so I think it was just really just being authentic and just about telling like my story. Um, and I also was writing about a friend of mine without giving away my script too much, writing about a friend of mine. And it was just like, I was just like, wow, there's like just so many like there's so many stories that just need to be told about people, about their religion, about their race that just don't get told on a daily basis. And if they do, like, it's not authentic and it's not, you know, a true representation of who they are. So, yep, that's it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I love, I also am on the train that there's just so many stories. And it's like, everybody needs to tell their stories. Um, I'm going to pass it to Jay because I know Jay also has a few questions. So I don't want to, my, I'm just going to keep monopolizing it. I have a journalism background. So I'm like, wait, let me throw it over to somebody else here. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks, Ali. And thanks you all for sharing like what the experience is like. I know it was definitely intense, especially because initially this program was supposed to be in person and then we quickly transitioned to Zoom and all of that stuff. So yeah, I, I see you. I see all of your hard work. And like, I'm glad to hear that this experience was really um an important one for you especially at the time and is like influenced what you're doing now uh which brings me to um it's like a two for question i guess so one what are you doing now now that you've uh we are a year out of when we kind of started the programming um and yeah let's start there so what are you doing now keep it a little brief um and we can go in the same order that we started so malachi you'd be up first <clears throat> for sure so based on um <laughs> well long story short uh working <laughs> let me put it uh, uh really sh uh shortly um right currently i'm uh, working between three jobs all uh working from home so basically i'm on the computer like <laughs> all day uh but it's cool um they're all in media um so certainly all related um and yeah the uh so yeah, working, um, I mean, I guess I don't need to go like too granularly into the jobs I'm doing, but yeah, working uh, at video places, places where I'm able to like create uh, video content and help people uh, create their video content. And um, uh, another job more recently that I got is working uh, as a podcast producer uh, with some comedians. Uh, so I felt like I'm really like bumping up against like the industry that, you know, I wanted to. Like, I felt like also being a part of Serial Storytellers was another uh, way of doing that. Um, and I really, oh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, I create a lot of content at YR Media uh, here in Oakland. Um, but yeah, no, trying to uh, stay in the industry, um, stay writing as well. Um, the working, the amount of work I'm doing right now, I haven't been able to write as much currently, but certainly when the summer rolls around, I wanna um, get back into that. Um, and there's some other like work that I've, that I have uh, done, but I think that's for a different question <laughs> in terms of like uh, production work, content work that I've done on the side. <laughs> awesome, thanks Malachi. Uh, yeah, I've also been working, I'm actually co-workers with Malachi uh, with one of his jobs. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, I've been working, I've also just been doing a lot of like writing and exploring what I want to make. Um, and then also having conversations about if we go into production, what will happen. Um, but yeah, I think I've kind of really focused on trying to build out and tell my story because I've been producing documentaries and I don't know, like it's so cool telling other people's stories, but then it's, you know, self-fulfilling to tell yours. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely, for those of you in the audience and watching um, later on, we highly emphasize telling your story. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Nars. But yeah. Um, oof. So since, since we've ended, um, I haven't picked up much on the initial story that I was creating, but in the kind of advent of the series behind me, Avatar Last Airbender, being repopulized or popularized. Um, my partner and I, before this kind of new wave happened, were like, what if we just wrote the next one, but like did it better? And again, as we've seen in the past, I was like, yeah, I could do that. I could probably do that. And um, 
started working on it. I have four seasons planned. I've written most of my first season. I have a website. I have social media accounts for it. I'm working on a show Bible. So I uh, have really been put, giving my all into this fan project and got all that done in about six and a half months or so. Um, and the announcement of Avatar Studios through Nickelodeon was just announced like a couple of weeks ago. So what I've been really focusing on is trying to get as much done as I can um, before I graduate in the next two years so that hopefully my senior project is I can um, pitch it to the studio and uh, we'll see how that goes because the initial writers of the series are back and kind of like the head of the studios and I don't really know how to go. Hey, not to say I can do your job better than you, but <laughs> I have some ideas, you know? <laughs> so that's what I've been working on. I've been very busy. Um, and a lot of the tools that I got from this um, program helped me do that. So like, I have a partner that I'm working on with it as well. And uh, he was like, how do you know all this? And I was like, well, baby. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm doing. Leah, we're getting a lot of requests for you to drop some info in the chat where people can follow what you're Oh, working. sure thing. I will I will try and gather all of that. Oh, yeah, also, I'm in school. Fun. I'm a sophomore. <laughs> yeah. sure. But I will do that. Thank you. Awesome, Leah. And like, definitely share that. I know we still have like our IG chat. So definitely share that in the chat. So uh, um, that's wonderful to hear. And like, you know, Yvette's always vouching for participants as well. So don't forget that she's a, a great resource and tool. Um, Sydney, you're up next. Sorry, that notification like jumped out at me. Okay. Um, I've just really been working a lot. Um, I'm a production coordinator at Pixar and I actually found out I got the job during the program. Um, so that was like really cool. Um, so just like that's been intense, like starting a new job, like, you know, remote. So that's an experience. Um, and I also started like a podcast with one of my friends um, where we discuss films each month based on the month, like it's kind of its own theme. So for Black History Month, we did Judas and the Black Messiah and Malcolm and Marie. And it was just cool. Like I love movies and like I love talking about movies. And so like, it's just a moment to just kind of like discuss it and just give my opinion and love for it or hate for it, <laughs> hate for the specific movie. Um, and I didn't expand too much on my project too much, but I feel like um, people can vouch for this, that like you tend to tweak it. Like you just keep messing with it and keep messing with it the more like you get inspired each day. So if anything, I've just been like revising stuff, but not so much adding on to it, so. Awesome, absolutely. Thank you, Sydney. Um, and yeah, that was really an amazing announcement when uh, you did find out during the, uh, the program. So congrats, I'm glad that that's going well. Um, so we're kind of coming to a close, but I wanna make sure we have time for Q and A. But before that, I just wanted to do a quick round table um, of maybe a sentence or two around like, what was the most beneficial thing that you learned from the Serial Storytellers program? I'm going to go in the same order. So Malachi, I'm spotlighting you first. Um, budgeting. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Uh, in terms of practicality, that jumps right at me. It's like literally, I mean, unless you like you go through it, you won't know just how expensive and time consuming. Time is a, a form of investment too. <laughs> like all of this will be. Um, other than that, I feel like uh, the most useful thing I learned, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but about engineering story construction, like I don't want to sound like cynical, but like literally figuring out how able, you're able to basically engineer like a story out of anything by plugging it into like these specific kind of like uh, story beats, uh, uh, like whatever the uh, save the cat one or the beginning, middle and end, which there, there's names for them. But like, literally, like once I really got into it, I was like, oh yeah, all you need to do is come to these with an idea and then plug your idea into like <laughs> these like um, parameters. And then it's almost like the story like writes itself. Yeah, Hero's Journey is another one. Um, so yeah, and also like allowed me to see like, oh yeah, these other people are doing that. This just came with their like one sentence idea and was able to actually make an entire production out of it. Um, so yeah, useful for me in the future, both in an artistic sense and in a sense if I'm ever like hired, like as you know, a lowly like writer or whatever in some writer's room, not that that's a bad job, that would be great. 
but I could be like, oh yeah, I know totally I can do this. I can do this story so fast. I told him, no, totally how to do this. <laughs> so um, I love it. Wouldn't have had those skills without this program or would have had to pay for them. <laughs> Exorbitant money to fi figure them out probably. Yeah, no, everything what Malachi said, but also, <laughs> Um, I think for me, I really, what I took away was how big of a deal writing is in movie production. It's like the first place where you could write down your ideas and also no one's going to say no, cause it's just a script. So you have the freedom to think of anything you want. Um, and also just like the environment of what a writer's room is. I felt like we experienced that and I, feel forever grateful because there was a lot of amazing ideas that were flowing and just, I don't know. Yeah. Um, besides what everyone else has said, because I agree, scripting and formatting is absolutely huge. It's not what I'm learning in school, even though I'm majoring in it. So that's invaluable. I love that. But to say something different, um, Something that I definitely took away and learned. Um, I guess I'll go with like confidence to share our work. Um, it's it's really scary to put yourself out there at all, and um, to do so around people who seem like they have all of their stuff together, even if they don't, and like have been in the industry and know what they're talking about is incredibly scary. But something that the um, the program taught me is that like I'm important what I have to say is important. And I can now traverse those spaces in a way where I no longer feel like what I'm saying isn't important. So like, even if I'm trying to sell something right now, before I would have been like, I'm like 20, no one cares, no one knows who I am anyway. But I feel like I could go into a meeting and go, here's why you need me. Here's why we should work together. Here's how I can make your establishment better. And I don't think I would have had that confidence without like any of them, um, my peers like reinforcing what I'm saying or Don or Jay or Yvette being like, no, this is great. You know what you're doing, even though you haven't had the experience, go out there and pursue that. So, yeah. Um, I I'm full welling up. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree with everything you were saying. Um, for me, like it's about to tie in like saying overcoming writer's block um for me I felt like when I would have writer's block it'd be because of confidence and so the moment I would just be like just write like just do it They'd just put your once I put my ideas down on paper like that's when things would just start flowing and so it was mainly just a confidence thing and so like once you know a vet or just our peers like you would see other people doing it it would just inspire you each week and then each week I would not have writer's block or if it'd be writer's block, I, I would just feel like, okay, maybe this doesn't make sense or I'm not following the structure. But, or or Don or Jay would tell me like, okay, this needs to be put here. This like, it was a learning experience. So um, yeah, that's what I took away from it. Awesome. Thank you so much for you all sharing. I think just like seeing you all shining now and today a year later like is such a testament to like the power of a program like this and its impact um on those who need it the most um for those of the audience and ali you can unpin um i would just want to give a round of applause to our our alumni who came to speak thank you so much you are so appreciated um i do want to open it up we are right at seven just about, but if there are any specific questions, um, please feel free to unmute yourselves. And um, let's see. Actually, before we go to questions, I have one, I just have a, one thing I needed to share. Um, it's kind of just in thinking about this um, and to acknowledge that um, I shared um, Rigo's script and his, um, the kind of the first pages of his script and the story outline. And just for everybody to know that we actually have um, everyone in the program sign a non-disclosure agreement. So thank you, Rigo, for being here and for letting me show your script a little bit, because that was really nice of you to do. Um, and we want to just make sure that everybody understands that when they're in this program, like we hold your stories um, as sacred. They are your stories. They're, you know, from your creative 
amazing energy. And so we're not going to take your stories and give them to anybody. We're really going to help you develop them so that you can then take them and get them um, produced or have them be part of, you know, um, what Yvette always talks about is just that you should have a document where you have all your ideas and you're writing down your ideas and you're working on different things because you never know when it may be the time to hit the hit it and share it. So I just want to recognize that and acknowledge that and let you know that we do hold your work in confidence. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Don. And um, Yvette, if you do take the scripted uh, track of ours, we'll heavily emphasize the importance of your intellectual property and protecting that by any means. So um, thank you for bringing that up, Don, because I know some people can be like, well, it's my writing and I'm sharing it. And it's supposed to be collaborative, which in some cases it is. But in this case, we really honor um, your ideas and your work and want to provide you with the support that you need in order to push that story forward. Um, so yeah, I know, again, we're at 701 right now. So um, if anyone has questions, now is the time to unmute or add it in the chat. I think most of them, the questions that came through in the chat were answered. Um, but if anything else has come to mind, please uh, feel free to unmute. Um, we can put it back into gallery view. And um, yeah, we'll have another slide right at the end. So we'll give about five minutes. So any, any takers out there, any questions or um, things you want to say directly to the alumni who are here with us this evening? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do have uh, just a question. I know I am an alumni, um, but I had a question just about the public access that you mentioned earlier. I didn't know about that. Is that for educational purposes only? Uh, or is that something that like other people like the public can participate in? Oh, no, absolutely. Check out San Francisco. Uh, yeah, check out SF Commons at BayVac. If you want to produce a show, you are. And um, yeah, absolutely. Come check it out. Um, talk to the folks who are running that. Um, we can put that in the chat for you as well. Yeah, it's a public, it's a public access cable, cable access show. Um, it looks like Jay put it in the chat for you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, especially since you're doing such good work too at, at um, Youth Radio. Awesome. Thank you. Please start a show. <laughs> right? Hey, don't, don't say that. Yeah, that that's, a, that's a threat. <laughs> I'll do it. But no, seriously, thank you. <laughs> So we have a question from On, who is actually a Fall 2020 Bridges Fellow for one of our youth programs. Um, she asks, "Has any have any of the pilots of the series these series produced by a company, or were they independently produced?" So just to answer that, um, you know, briefly, like this is a, an opportunity to develop your ideas. Uh, we haven't had people pitch those. Um, our hope this year is that we're going to have um, at the end of the workshops, we're going to have a pitching session so people learn and develop what the pitch is. How do you do a pitch? Who do you pitch it to? Um, so we're, our hope is that people will continue to work on their pilots, continue to work on their series, and then get the skills that they need in order to pitch. So that's sort of part, you know, that's our next part of this program because we know that that's really important. Awesome, other questions out there? Any curiosities, whether it's about the application? Um, it looks like the majority of everyone who's in here has been a part of the BayVac program or is like on staff. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's another development that we're getting together as far as like how we can connect alumni from all of these different programs and areas. So yes, as Don said, please encourage your friends uh, to apply and share with your friends or communities. Um, but yeah, any other questions, thoughts, comments before we wrap up for the evening? Some people know that I like my awkward silences, so it's totally fine. <laughs> okay, well, um, if there aren't any other questions, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up for the evening. Um, I think there was just one more slide with uh, more information about serial storytellers. 
um, but it's up on our website as well. And we're just really excited that you came to join us. Um, and to our alumni, thank you for sharing all that you're doing. We're excited to see all that is to come. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thanks everybody. Yeah, and the, um, the application process is open through April. So definitely share it with as many people as you can. And, you know, we're looking for um, probably about 12 people in each um, program, scripted 12 people and unscripted 12 people. So please share it. Thanks a lot. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. That was really cool. <laughs> you want to stop the recording oh yeah i'll stop the recording i don't know how to stop the recording i will do that <laughs>